Genetic research is affecting species from all over the animal kingdom. And here on the farm, we've seen many of them. But there's one creature that interests the scientists above all others. For his final meeting, Giles is heading to the basement, where experts are unlocking the genetic mysteries of the most powerful animal on Earth. Genes play such an important part in our life, uh, how we grow up, the kind of persons we become, and that is really the, that's the challenge for genetics in the future. It's also the excitement that we can better understand ourselves as individuals. Giles is about to enter a place where they're putting animals to work in a mission to understand humans. The creatures being studied are so valuable, he must don protective clothing to ensure he doesn't contaminate them. In this labyrinth, mutant mice are being scrutinized for their genetic secrets. And there are literally thousands of them. The mouse is a good model for the human, although it's small and furry, and we're big and we're not very furry. We know that its physiology, its biochemistry, the way it works is very similar to humans. It's like Mouse City. Look at them all in their high-rise blocks. Apparently, mice and humans share over 90% of their genes. And for these geneticists, that's remarkably useful. We know that in the human population, we're carrying all sorts of alterations in our DNA. You are carrying alterations in your DNA. Those alterations will make you more susceptible in the future to Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes as you get older. We need to know the relationship between those alterations and what's happening in the human population. So we can study how genes cause disease in mice, and we can then translate that information into working out how genes cause disease in humans. To find out how genes work in mice, the animals are first injected with a chemical that randomly alters the DNA in their sperm. All these male mice here have received an injection, um, a course of three injections, in fact, that damages their sperm. So when their sperm actually regenerates, all their offspring should be carrying mutations. The male mice with the mutated sperm are now placed in cages to mate with females. When the offspring are born, each is carefully inspected to find out what unusual new traits it might be carrying. He does look quite normal. With a full screen, we will actually check that their teeth are there. They've got the right number of toes, the right number of tails. Right. <laughs> and Do they often have more than one tail? <laughs> Not often. The mutations in the sperm are totally random, so no one can predict what kind of mice they'll create. She's actually got quite wonky ears there. Once an unusual feature is discovered, the scientists look for the gene that's causing it. And it seems they're searching for everything, from genes that cause cancer to genes that cause dominant behavior. But my favorites are the mice with a more specifically human flaw. Right, so um, these are the alcoholic mice. Yes, these are the ones that are on the alcohol preference testing. And they have a preference for it? <clears throat> yes, you can see, I don't know if you can see in the cage that there's two bottles. One of them is ordinary Gosh. water, and one of them with medical grade, well, you see in there, 3% alcohol. Which is quite a high 3%. Scientists believe that part of the reason people become alcoholic is genetic. These little fellows are on the equivalent of two bottles of whiskey a day. This is actually a preference test, so the mouse itself yeah. has a choice. Right. Does it want to go to the water bottle, does it want to go to the alcohol? As to do alcoholics, to, uh, Yes, yeah. yeah. To find out why the mice drink, they are anaesthetized and placed in a brain scanner. Researchers discovered the animals lack a crucial piece of neurochemistry, which leaves them feeling jittery and irritable all the time. And it's believed that drinking alcohol makes them feel more relaxed. The gene that causes this problem has been discovered, and the impact of the finding could be enormous. There's no doubt that if we understand more about the relationship between gene and disease, we're not just understanding the symptoms, 
we really understand the mechanism of what's causing a person to uh, drink too much alcohol. And this kind of research could lead to a new era of personalized medicine. In the future, a GP will take a blood sample from you. They will look at all the genes that might be involved in all these diseases, see whether you're carrying alterations in your genes that say you're at risk of disease. And then there's enormous opportunities to change your lifestyle or perhaps even to intervene with drugs to ensure that you, we put off the day when you might develop those diseases. They really have got everything down here. Just round the corner from the alcoholics are mice with an even more topical condition. Nice to meet you. Um, what have you got here? Um, we've got some obese mice. So if I get these out, these are brothers. They're about 14 weeks old. And so this one is about 50 grams, and his brother is about 30 grams. Gosh, yeah. so what with me being 12 and a half stone, that is like having a 20 stone brother? Yes. yes. I would not hang out with him in public. These mice have a genetic mutation, which means they can't tell when they're full up. He's actually burrowing into his food <laughs> up to his... All he can do is his huge arse. As a result, they just carry on eating. This place is in Aladdin's cave of understanding, directly relevant to us all. It's incredible to think that because of genetics, future medicine could be tailored to our individual needs. But one thing's worrying me. Once we've identified certain characteristics by their DNA, won't societies that view those characteristics as undesirable be tempted to try and eliminate them? I think most people regard um, actually treating disease by manipulating our DNA as, as a route that we don't want to go down mm -hmm. and a route that we don't need to go down yet. Mm -hmm. We know because of the complexity of the genome that messing with it is a dangerous and difficult business. Mm -hmm. What we want is to understand the relationship between genes and disease so that we can intervene, not at the level of the gene, mm -hmm. but at, the, at the, how the gene is affecting the biology of that particular person and how we can intervene with drugs or even just better understanding of whether they're predisposed to a particular disease so we can give lifestyle advice. I hear what Professor Brown is saying, but scientists are currently trying to identify a gay gene, a musical gene, even an infidelity gene. One day they may find them, and when they do, what then? <laughs>